Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. Today, I got a few DC updates for you today. But first, it's gonna be we're gonna be talking about movie theaters. Apparently, a lot of movie business leaders are urging Congress to fund theater bailouts so we can watch movies in theaters. Isn't that great? I would love that. Also, some CW new updated casting and production. Also, Harley Quinn teases more of season three which is going on HBO Max. Also, HBO Max has more engagement now, so that's kind of really, really cool to hear about that. And then finally, I'm going to talk about a flash theory that I have that I wanted to share with you that I've been holding on for a while, and hopefully you like it. It may or may not happen, but I think it's fun to speculate and talk about for the Flash in Zack Snyder's Justice League. All right, but... Thank you so much to all the members here of the Ping Pong Flick Show. You guys and girls are the lifeline of the Ping Pong Flick Show. Thank you for clicking that join button for the cost of a cup of coffee a month. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you enjoy the exclusive access videos that are in that folder. And also, of course, thank you so much to all the subscribers. I love you all. All right, now on to the DC updates and movie business. Movie business leaders urge Congress to fund theater bailout. Now this is coming out from Variety on, on this matter, and I'm gonna read to you these paragraphs here. There may be a few the uh, director names that actually stand out to you. All right, leaders of the nation's movie theater business, which has been hammered by the COVID-19 pandemic, are urging Congress to provide bailout funds so the industry can survive. The letter urges Senator Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democratic leader Chuck Schumer, House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy to direct, redirect and unallocated funds from the CARES Act to proposals that help businesses that have suffered the steepest revenue drops due to the pandemic. The National Association of Theater Owners, the Directors Guild of Americas, the Motion Picture Association, and more than 70 directors, producers, and writers signed the letter. Signers include Wes Anderson, Judd Apatow, James Cameron, a whole bunch of people, Clint Eastwood even, Paul Feige, Greta Gerwig. Um, but here's are the ones that you'll probably recognize. Patty Jenkins, M. Night Shyamalan, Zack Snyder, James Wan, all of these. Oh, Denise Villeneuve, cool. And Martin Scorsese amongst Christopher Nolan and so on and so forth. There's a ton of names here, but uh, definitely... These uh, people signed this letter to urge, uh, you know, the Congress to help out the theaters that are very much in trouble right now because of COVID. I mean, it's the, not the only industry that's in trouble, understandably, but these are people in who are still making movies and hopefully get those movies out in theaters. Theaters is such a big deal. I would love to watch movies in theaters. A couple of my movie theaters have opened, but they're only playing classic old movies right now. Um, and some, I think, are Tenet, I think. But uh, it's still yet. It's still um, closed for the most part. A lot of the countries still closed, and they're struggling because they need those ticket sales. So hopefully Congress can help out with the movie theater business as well. All right, but if you don't want to go and see a mo uh, you know, movies in the theater, there's still a lot of content, DC content, over on the TV shows. And this is a new casting for Batwoman. Yes, it says here, Gotham actor Alex Morph cast as Victor Zaz in Batwoman, as tweeted out by Get Fandom, uh, but the article is on Entertainment Weekly. Entertainment Weekly, Batwoman cast this Gotham actor for Victor Zaz, which is interesting because Gotham has a Victor Zaz, but they, but because that that person uh, I think plays a character on a CW, I believe it's on the Flash. So I guess that's why they can't use. But it's a multiverse anyway, so it doesn't really make sense. But apparently they loved what this guy did and decided to cast um, Alex Morph from Gotham instead. So Gotham actor Alex Morph is returning to Batman's beleaguered uh, beleaguered city. 
EW has exclusively learned that Morph will guest star as DC Comics villain Victor Zaz in Batwoman Season 2. According to the official description, Zaz is a charismatic, skilled hitman with high, unpredictable energy. He proudly carves tally marks onto his skin for every victim he kills. Now, you probably are, if you've not, never watched the CW or if you've never watched Gotham, um, you may be familiar with a Victor Zaz. Chris Messina plays Victor Zaz in uh, the movie Birds of Prey and the fantastic emancipation of one harley quinn right so before that there was barry's anthony kerrigan on gotham uh which is the guy that i was talking about that played victor's ass tim booth also played victor's ass in 2005's batman begins so when batman batwoman returns for its second season it will be led by javicia leslie whose character ryan wilder uh wilder picks up the crimson knight's mantle following kate kane's disappearance and ruby rose's departure from the series Another CW show that has someone that's returning this time to the show is John Wesley Shipp. John Wesley Shipp says he'll be back as Jay Garrick in The Flash Season 7. This is coming from Superhero Hype. Since the very beginning of The Flash, there's been a place for John Wesley Shipp. He was the star of CBS The Flash in 1990, and he played Barry Allen's father, Henry Allen, in the new series. Additionally, Shipp was cast as a Flash of Earth 3, Jay Garrick. Uh, he eventually reprised his role as the older Barry Allen from the original series during Elseworlds. However, Ship's Barry met his demise in Crisis on Infinite Earths, but that doesn't mean he's done with The Flash. And during an interview with Den of Geek, Ship confirmed that he'll be back as Jay in The Flash Season 7. He just doesn't know exactly when he will appear. This is what he had to say. I know Jay Garrick is coming back to the CW show, but they were supposed to be at a further point in the story. They didn't get to play out the end of season six because of COVID, as we know. So they've got to tie up some things. The Flash showrunner, Eric Wallace, has said that he does want to talk to me about some ideas about Jay Garrick moving or going forward. So Jay's Earth 3 was destroyed during Crisis along with other alternate universes. Regardless, Ship assured fans that Jay and his wife, Joan, both survived the cataclysm. We know that Joan, uh, played by Williams Garrick, and Jay are on Earth Prime. We'll see what they come up with. My experience with this group is that they've given you every reason to have faith that whatever they come up with is going to be interesting and you're going to want to play it. Uh, the Flash Season 7 will hit the CW in 2021. Of course, there was no news about it being um, held back or delayed in Vancouver for, for shooting. Um, but uh, So hopefully everything goes well and we'll get to see uh, another Flash Season 7. I still got to catch up and I can't wait to do so. All right. Now on to uh, another series. This time it's something that is kind of rated R for mature audiences only, and that is Harley Quinn. The Harley Quinn creators, they're teasing something. Uh, Harley Quinn creators tease what to expect in season three. And I like this tweet from Get Fandom because it kind of just narrows down that entire conversation for me and makes it much easier to uh, go through. How Harley transitions from a lifetime of toxic relationships into a good one they kind of explained that how Pern and Schumacher kind of said that you know at the beginning of season one they had that toxic relationship between her and Joker and they didn't want to actually throw her into a new relationship while in a relationship with Joker because they didn't want to show like oh she's just moving on to another relationship she needed to grow on her own she had to be on her own before realizing who she actually wants to be with. And in this case, it's Ivy, right? And so in terms of Poison Ivy, uh, this is what they had to say about Poison, getting into Poison Ivy's origin and her point of view in season three. Halpern said this, we spent two years digging into Harley and Ivy was her own character, but her stories were told mostly in relation to Harley. So I think in this third season, it'd be interesting to flip that and dig deeper into Ivy and her life and tell some stories through her point of view so we're excited to be able to do that because it feels completely new somewhere to go that we haven't gone that isn't going to make the audience feel like we saw two seasons of that what the f is this then i think with gordon we've also portrayed the gotham police department as really incompetent also everyone goes rogue anytime they want to go rogue and i think we're seeing in real life the actual repercussions of things like that obviously it's a comedy but those themes were already baked into our show now they said that 
you know, in real life, there was a Zoom meeting between the LAPD and the mayor, uh, and it, they wanted to, they texted each other and says, let's do something like that for season three. We'll have a parody of that scene, except with the GCPD uh, and getting berated by the city of Gotham. So that, I think that's kind of funny, especially, um, you know, during now COVID and Zoom meetings and stuff like that. But yeah, Halper says this, it's like having Gordon deal with the reality of policing in Gotham has completely failed and him really realizing what is this new system that we need to put in in order to effectively police Gotham and is he even capable of it because the system is so effed up Gotham's is a terrible place to live I mean if you think of all the cities in comic book lore can you think of a worse major city to live in that than Gotham like it's just constantly under attack and why does Metropolis look like this utopia or when Gotham is this total cesspool so being able to also dig into that and have Gordon go on a journey within the third season would be very fun. So a little bit more of Commissioner Gordon grappling with GCPD, probably um, have his own arc in there would be pretty interesting. Uh, you know, he, he was kind of a, a comic relief here and there, and he was just being silly. Uh, and then he kind of, uh, you know, got in his own voice and, and his own mission in a way. So it's great to see Commissioner Gordon uh, getting a little bit more of his story back uh, and uh, more of importance within a GCPD. So I'm really looking forward to that. But Definitely, uh, it's going to be uh, rather interesting for Holly Quinn uh, season three. And there's also talk about maybe are they interested in making an animated feature with Harley Quinn, like an animated movie? Uh, Schumacher says this. Yeah, we would love that. When we were waiting for a season three pickup, we were kicking around ideas with the executives over at Warner Brothers Animation about that sort of thing because we were like, well, we have stories to tell with these characters. We want to continue going with it. And if season three can't happen, maybe we can do something in the feature space, which is sort of independent of a network picking up the show or not. So that is something that has been on our minds right now. We're not planning on it, but it's absolutely something that we'd be very interested in, uh, very much in doing down the road. So that'd be awesome. I would love to see them do an animated feature as well. Uh, what's interesting about that one line though, that just to remind you that they just said right there, that should, um, jar something in your mind about, uh, Warner brothers and Warner max, right? So HBO max is, uh, all, everything developed for HBO max is coming from Warner max. So they said that, which is, uh, they talked to Warner Brothers Animation about that thing. Warner Brothers, right? And they said it's sort of independent of a network picking up the show. So it's independent away from HBO Max actually picking up their show. It's a different division altogether. So um, that even that little line there kind of goes, goes to show um, that the decision making for both sides is very different. And you would actually have to, if you wanted to do something in this area, you would have to go to this division and it not they don't necessarily talk to each other at all. So bear that in mind uh, for future things, you know, like Zack Snyder's Justice League, for instance, or either or other Justice League or other uh, films that would come out. They're, they're really not that much of a conversation going between those two divisions, right? But speaking about HBO Max, HBO Max uh, in engagement is um, actually increasing. This is coming from Luis Fernando. What a great guy. He does great analysis uh, and data. I, that's why I follow him. He, he does great work on this. When Warner Media's Jason Kilar said that HBO Max engagement was increasing, he was about right as new data from Apptopia shows that daily users have been in an increasing uptrend from an average of 2.6 million in August to 2.77 million in September. Raised by Wolves must be one of the reasons. Uh, I love Raised by Wolves, by, by the way. You guys should check that out. Um, but uh, he has a little bit of uh, shows what that mobile app is. I might even download myself. That's kind of cool. Um, Aptopia also shows HBO Max average daily subscription revenue increased from 221000 a day to 249000 a day in September. The price cut promo, though, 1499 to 1199 that might have worked. That might have uh, made it taken over the edge. Uh, but uh, there are some downloads that actually was reduced, though. But it's worthy to remind, remember that all these data is based on HBO Max's performance in mobile phone apps downloaded through Go Google Play or App Store only. Oh, okay. So it does. this is not actually um translate to what's uh being downloaded or shown on smart tvs on the playstation 4 so on and so forth so those those numbers much much 
must be a lot bigger, must be a lot huger uh, than before. So uh, than than what's shown on here. So um, bear that in mind. But at least for at least on the Google Play or App Store and to this app here, it does show there is a relatively increase. I'm I'm really curious to see uh, what those increases are when it gets to Zack Snyder's Justice League coming out. Like how much of a demand would Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, do in favor for HBO Max? I'm really intrigued by that, uh, and I think it's going to blow it out of the water. And I think this, you know, HBO Max, Jason Keeler especially, is ready to look at those numbers to see if you know there is something about this, and that they will definitely continue the Snyderverse after that, uh, which really means like Justice League season two or three. So. But speaking about Zack Snyder's Justice League for a minute, another uh, person came out to stand with Ray Fisher. Karen Bryson, a.k.a. also known as Eleanor Stone and Zack Snyder's Justice League, stands with Ray Fisher. Ray Fisher tweeted this out today. Let's go at Karen Bryson. Uh, also, Karen Bryson had put on Instagram a photo of herself, uh, which her role was cut from Justice League and uh, was, and you know, it's, and she actually did the hashtag I stand with Ray Fisher. Important to note, she was not part of the reshoots, I don't think. Um, and so she probably wouldn't know too much firsthand of what happened, uh, any of that gross, abusive uh, things that happened on the Justice League reshoots. But having them cut her out to begin with uh, is is pretty bad. And I, I think uh, I'm really happy that we're finally getting to get to see her in Zack Snyder's Justice League. There may have been even some things, um, you know, executives that may have been involved during the actual Justice League shoot before the reshoots as well. It may not involve Joss Whedon, but it may have involved the other executives that were named as well. So um, this is interesting stuff. More people are coming out to stand with Ray Fisher. I'm wondering who else will come out and stand with Ray Fisher after this. But let's talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League for a second. Also, you know, Ezra Miller's birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ezra. Ezra Miller, uh, who will play the titular role in Andy Muschietti's upcoming film, The Flash, in 2022. Happy birthday, Ezra Miller. But that's why this actually reminded me today that, you know what? I want to talk about my Flash theory in Zack Snyder's Justice League. And um, I was kind of inspired, actually, by Real in Motion. Real in Motion um, had did a Zack Snyder's timeline. Garza talked about what he believes is the uh, timeline A and B and C and so on and so forth. Sam Parker Meadow also flashed up his own timeline of Zack Snyder's Justice League as well. I'm not going to get into that. I may have a time for something like that, but um, I was inspired by the fact about what made something happen and what, you know, what point in time in the first timeline uh, Jar made, you know, split off to another timeline and so on and so forth. So I have my own take on what actually started all that. And like I said, this is just a theory of mine. It may or may not come true. I don't know. But if you don't want to know a thing or at least theories about Zack Snyder's Justice League, then that's pretty much all I have for today in terms of DC updates. But if you're still here and you want to go on this adventure with me in speculation discussion, which I've my, you know, really my channel has always been about since the beginning. Um, I love to go and talk about this and I hope you uh, stay tuned for this as well. So let's get into it, right? So the flash, the flash, the first time we see the flash was in Batman v Superman when he kind of comes in and he's like uh, talking to Bruce and it's like, am I too soon? I'm too soon, right? And Lois is the key and blah, blah, blah. And Bruce Wayne's like, what the heck is going on? Is this after witnessing the nightmare vision and seeing that and, you know, the thought process that go in his head. And so it leads to Justice League where this was scene was cut out from the movie. But Zach said this was a scene where he was telling Wonder Woman how he saw, he saw Flash come through and tell him about all this nonsense and that there's probably something darker that's happening there. So what's the difference between this and the last one, uh, the last timeline or the original timeline that we'll probably never get to see because we were only witnessing the part where he comes in through BVS is that... At this point, Bruce Wayne knows he comes in, knows this is the Flash, and maybe uh, during this time there's a conversation with the Flash that says, hey, you came in through time, right, to tell me about the future. 
And I'm wondering if at this point in time, Flash is like, I can go back in time. <laughs> like, uh, uh, I can go back in time? Uh, I can do that? Does that does that work? At the end of the movie, or at the end of that fight, where they're all looking up into the boom tube, the boom tube opens, you see dark side, right? Maybe this is the part where they failed to stop the boom tube from opening. Um, Steppenwolf's head rolls, and Darkseid steps out with his entire army and kills everybody. Kills everybody but Flash. Remember that one Superman uh, storyboard that you see a boom tube in the back and Superman's hand is like this? Um, you can click up on the video. I'm going to link it so you can, when I explain that Superman scene. But I'm thinking this is the part where he says, tells Flash or tells somebody, um, and, and maybe this is the time where Batman tells Flash, Go, you can run. You, you've done this before. We, I've seen you. You've gone through the speed force or whatever. You came through time and warned me. It's time for you to go back and do something, right? And I think this is when Flash realizes that you told me I could do that, and I'm going to try it. I'm definitely going to try to do that. So Dark Side boom tubes in uh, with his entire army, decimates everyone. Flash is going back in time, back to the Happy 214 Day picture where um, Zack Snyder had posted this and on February 14th, and you see two flashes. And yeah, I mean, you could probably argue most more successfully that that's the same Flash. He's just going so fast. You see multiples of him. Um, but I always look back at this and I'm like, what if, you know, he's really going back through time? Like going through parts of the actual Justice League story um, and changing different things to it so that it could speed up, speed up everyone, right? Like he would go through here, help out with his own Flash because he's looking at, you know, himself or looking at, I think these uh, debris are coming down. Um, and then he goes in, helps push Wonder Woman's sword back into her hand uh, and, you know, doing things like that. Um, and this is the part that, that gave me that thought because he needed time to get to jolt Vic back into the box. This is said here is it when J bird 821 says, is this anywhere near where he screams Barry Zack Snyder, um, please uh, J he answers J bird right after that. When Barry runs back, after the league's initial failure and uses the epic jolt of speed force to project Vic into the boxes, right? And so that would enable Ray Fisher, Cyborg, to destroy the boxes and keep the boom tube from opening and seeing a dark side in, in, in which he, Zack Snyder, did say this. They don't fight him yet. They have an exchange. They see him with his massive invasion force, also known as the whole family, just on the other side of the boom tube. But then the tube collapses because they've destroyed the mother boxes so he can't come through. So when I read this line, they've destroyed the mother boxes so he can't come through. To me, that line reads as the mother boxes are utilized to have dark side come through that's the point of the mother boxes is so that the tube opens the tube stays opens and dark side comes through that's the point of the unity the point of all the mother's boxes to put together they failed the first time the league's initial failure must not be because something explodes and all of a sudden like it terraforms the earth or whatever into apocalypse but it's that the failure is that the mother box was able to open up a boom tube and dark side steps out and uh, literally, you know, just kills everybody um, in which makes the flash needing to go back through time to do something. I don't really know. Like my, my best gear theory is that he's possibly changing few things through the time so that maybe it speeds them up to the point that it will get to Ray Fisher or I keep saying Victor Stone to the mother box faster or something and able to destroy it. Because we don't do know that it ends on a good ending. It doesn't end on a bad ending. Uh, they're all there standing. They're all the Superman looks happy. Flash looks happy right here. So they all end on a, on a good note that they successfully um, 
close the boom tube and but have a glimpse of dark side at the same time but that's why the question was what's the initial failure right and why is he going through time what what is the initial failure so i'm thinking my theory is that the initial failure is that they didn't stop the boom tube from opening and we do get to see dark side as entire army or something decimate the entire justice league except for the flash in which he has to turn back time does something to put Vic into the mother box or something and and that's why we get a, a happier ending for that is it true i don't know we'll find out in 2021 uh with uh, zach snyder's just league uh i don't know uh, and I'm, I'm really excited and I love talking about these different theories and stuff like that, uh, speculating and discussing what may or may not happen. Um, and especially even a longer history of it. Like I, like I can only talk about what's probably in Zack Snyder's just league because there's so little we know about JL two and three, but I would love to discuss those further, um, as we continue the show. Um, you know, later on and in a further episode, in a future episode, actually, uh, as we get to 2021. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you love this daily dose of DC content that includes movies, shows, and video games, please click the like button. Subscribe. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Keep that hot dog light on. And I'll see you next time.